Why should two cameras, both with 28mm field of view, in the same time, one small and one big? I want to talk about this now. Hi there and welcome to my channel. My name is Tudor Matescu and I want to share with you my experience in shooting two cameras with a 28mm field of view equivalent lens. The two cameras that I've used were Fujifilm XF10, that I'm sorry I don't have it on me right now, but I'll show you some b-rolls, and Fujifilm X-T5 with 18mm f2. So, one small camera, a pocketable camera XF10 with an 18mm f2.8 lens, and one big camera with 18 meters f2. And it seems at first that this was a crazy idea, but the results are very, very interesting. And I want to share with you these results. But before, please subscribe now, now, now to my channel and give it a like. Please hit I that like, like button it. now. First of all, let me share with you how I was able to use both cameras in the same time. I had my XT5 hanged on the neck like this with this Hyperion strap and XF10 with a hand strap attached to my hand. And because XF10 it is very small, I was keeping XF10 at my wrist and I was able also to maneuver XT5. And I was changing between cameras depending on the subject and depending on the scene. And yes, there are some interesting facts regarding these two cameras and why would you want to use both of these cameras in the same time or why you need to have two cameras with the 28mm equivalent field of view and maybe why not three? Because in the future I will test this 18mm f1.8 shooting in the same time with another 28mm focal lens. So let's talk first about Fujifilm X-T5. I discovered that when I'm using Fujifilm X-T5 I have the trust I will nail the focus. So this was very very important for me. I had the trust that I was able to nail the focus at smaller apertures but also at big apertures. So when I was entering in a shadow area I was having the trust that I was able to nail the focus at f2. So this is a huge deal. When I have entered in the shadow area where I needed a fast shutter speed it was easier for me to set and to have trust that XT5 will nail focus. So if you want to have the trust that your subject will be in focus at any given aperture, then XT5 with 18 meters f2 will not disappoint you at all. The next thing that I discovered about XT5 is that I love the colors. The colors are beautiful. And with my Primavera Negra SCP, I was feeling very, very motivated to go for the colors, to look for scenes where I would have colors. So I've shoot my X-T5 in color and my XF10 in black and white. So X-T5 is really motivating me to get the color. So great for colors, great results. I'm showing the results and I'm totally loving the results. Again, I'm totally loving the results great color rendition, great tonalities and so on. So it is the sweetest spot, XT5, it is the sweetest spot regarding color. Another big point that I've loved when using XT5 side by side with XF10 was that I was able to shoot very well from a down angle point of view. So with XT5 I was able to keep the camera with the tilt screen in a very powerful down angle. So this is a huge advantage. When I want to use XF10, I'm not able to have that trust that I will nail the image, that I will nail the composition because XF10 doesn't have a tilt screen. So regarding a down angle composition, XT5 again is bringing here a big plus. Another point that I discovered when using XT5 side by side with XF10, it was that XT5 was making the subject distracted from my XF10. So I was able to keep in one hand XT5 or let XT5 hang and use XF10 to take the picture. The subjects were looking at XT5 and 
weren't able to see XF10. So the trick is really working and it's very, very nice. And the last point regarding what I love about XT5 side by side with XF10 is that, again, very usable when the light is changing. So when I was changing the light because I was entering from sun to very dark shadows, XT5 was there and it was very easily for me to set it up. Just set the aperture at f2.8 and I was done. One disadvantage of XT5 that I felt compared to XF10 was that I wasn't able to shoot from up, from an up angle. It is a little harder for me because it has some weight, it is a visible camera, but there XF10 was winning it. So now we are getting to why XF10 completed the combo very, very well. So how I said, I had my XF10 strapped to my wrist. Fujifilm XF10 shined when I wanted to shoot from different angles. It was very, very freely to use XF10 from upside. Again, very easy. I really like to shoot with XF10 from an up angle. I'm looking like a tourist and uh, it is very fun. The camera is so small, it's so laughable. It's not uh, making the subject feel uh, aggressed by the camera. So again, it is great for different angles. So for an up angle, but also for a lateral angle. So when I was wanting to shoot a lateral angle with XF10, it was very easily for me. So great with X. It's a little harder because the weight, the volume aren't helping you to move the camera so freely like you're able to use XF10. And why I was able to shoot XF10 so freely? Because I was using XF10 in manual focusing mode. I was using it at 0.7 centimeters with f11 or f16 aperture or in snap shooting mode, 5 meters to two meters. So I really didn't have to worry about the AF and everything that I wanted to shoot was in acceptably focused, but of course not as sharp maybe as an AF lens. But those pictures are bringing something unique to the table. Another advantage for XF10 was that I was able to bring the camera very close to the subject. So this is why I've set up my camera to 0.7 centimeters and I was taking up close images. Yes, not all the images are great and I wasn't able to compose very well all the images, but the results are great and are a proof that you can do this with XF10. So if you want to get those close up wide shots, XF10 is for you. It is very, very easily to get very close and to not disturb with XF10. I felt with XF10 only two disadvantages. When I wanted to shoot a down angle. So when I wanted to take a down angle picture, it is hard to see the screen. But if you know your focal length, it will be okay. But again, it is hard. So you really need to use that 28 millimeters to know it, to be able to shoot it without a tilt screen. So this is where an X70 comes into play. But it was very easy, how I've said, to take the up angle with XF10. The next disadvantage was when I was changing fast from light to dark shadows. This means I need to adjust fast my settings. And with XF10, it's not so easy like it's with XT5, where you are able to see physically all your control. So in conclusion, both cameras have advantages and disadvantages. And I really felt that XF10 was a very good partner to Fujifilm XT5. They were completing each other's very, very well. I had a great day. I had a lot of fun. And I really felt again that both two cameras, Fujifilm X-T5 with 18 mm F2 with XF10 really completed each other's very, very well. So when I was seeing different subjects and different scenes, I was able to compose and to have the same signature of a 28 mm lens depending on different scenes and on different subjects. So I have close-up scenes, close-up subjects or documentary scenes or colorful subjects. And if I want to put all in black and white, I can do that. Or if I want to put all in color, I can do that. And the colors are pretty compatible because we are talking about two Fujifilm cameras. So my next project will be to shoot 80 mm f1.8 side by side with XF10 or 
with 18 meters f2 or why not three lenses at the same time but till then check my 18 millimeters f1.4 review on xt5 and my xf10 review thank you for watching this video please subscribe now 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 for more leave me a comment tell me what you think and leave me some questions in the comments thank you and i'll talk to you soon bye bye